Hi everybody, this video is for section 6.1, discrete and continuous random variables, and this is one of my favorite sections of the entire course, because in this section we get to analyze the likelihood of winning games. We're going to look at the mean and standard deviation of random variables to assess whether games are fair. So if you look at the example we have here, we have a carnival game where a coin is tossed three times. I have my coins here. You pay $10 to win or maybe lose based on the number of heads or tails that appear. So if I'm able to flip the coins and I get three heads, I win $25. If I get two heads, I win $12. One head, I win nothing. And zero heads, I win $15. And what we'd like to know is, is this a winnable game? Meaning in the long run, if I play this game many, many times, do I stand the chance of making money? Or is it more advantageous for the people who created the game, the house? Or is it equal on both sides? So we're going to learn how to analyze these games. So first, we're going to define a variable here. We're going to let x equal the amount of money won from a $10 bet. And notice I'm using capital X here. Usually we use lowercase x for variables. But here, x stands for the entire distribution of variables, meaning $15, $0, $12, and $25. So we use a capital X here to uh, mark the distribution. So some definitions to start off with. This is an example of a random variable. A random variable takes numerical values that describe the outcome of some chance process, just like our game. Next, this is also called a discrete random variable because it has a countable number of outcomes. Here there are only four outcomes, $25, $15, $12, or $0. This is unlike in previous chapters, like normal distributions, where we had an infinite number of outcomes. And we'll see what we call those later in this video. So what we'd like to do here is we would like to analyze the probability of what's going on here. And a probability distribution of a random variable gives all the possible values and their probabilities. This is simply going to be a list of everything that can happen in our game along with the probabilities. So this is really a coin tossing game, and it's three coins, so we can easily just list all the outcomes of tossing three coins, and we can find all the probabilities. I see here there's one way for me to win $25, getting heads, 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 so that's a one-eighth probability. There's one way to get three tails, meaning zero heads, and win $15, so that has a one-eighth probability. There are three ways to have one head and two tails. These are the outcomes that would win $0. And there are three outcomes that have two heads and one tail. In those uh, instances, I would win $12. So those have a 3 8 probability. And a probability distribution is just a listing of all these probabilities uh, associated with their outcomes. So it's just a listing here. So we have all the values in this game along with their probabilities we see here. You can take a minute and copy those down. And we could also use a histogram to do this as well. So along the x-axis, we have the number of heads, 0, 1, 2, or 3, along with the probabilities 1 8 and 3 8. And you see that this is a symmetric probability distribution. So now what we would like to do here is take all this information together and find out, is this game winnable? And first of all, the probabilities we have must satisfy two requirements, going back to our probability distribution. Every probability is a number between 0 and 1, just like we've seen in the past. All of our probabilities are 1 8 or 3 8 and the sum of the probabilities is 1, and you can verify that 1 8, 3 8, 3 8, and 1 8 all add up to 1. So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our probability distribution, and we're going to find something called the mean of the discrete random variable. But that has another name. It's also called the expected value. So we're going to talk about in this section the mean of a random variable and the expected, var uh, expected value, and those will be interchangeable terms. To find the mean of x, we multiply each possible value by its probability, and then we add all the products. So what we have here is a formula that's right from your book. It's given to you on the AP exam. And we have to try to break it down a little bit. All this means is you take all the outcomes, which are the x's, you multiply by their probabilities, and you see the summation symbol here. So for example, we would take $15, one of the outcomes, multiply it by its probability 1 8, and we would do that repeatedly for all the outcomes. We would add them together, and you can do the calculation here. I did it on the calculator beforehand. And you can verify that that comes out as $9.50. Now notice $9.50 is not any of the particular outcomes. What the mean of the random variable tells us is, if we did this game over and over and over again, what would the average be in a long number of trials of this game? And that's an example of the law of large numbers that we saw in a previous chapter. So $9.50 doesn't tell us what's going to happen in the short term. It tells us in the long term, if we played this game repeatedly, we would average out to $9.50. So the mean is actually pretty easy to compute if you have a nice short list um, in your discrete random variable probability distribution.
The standard deviation does get a little trickier. It has a fairly messy formula that I'll show you here. Again, it's given to you on the AP exam. Uh, we do have a formula for the variance. And keep in mind the variance is just the square of the standard deviation. Um, but notice how it's formatted here. We're going to take all the outcomes, which are x's, subtract them from the mean, which here is $9.50. We're going to square those, and we're going to multiply them by the probability. And we'll do this for all of the outcomes in the list, all four of the outcomes. And then we will add, uh, then we will add those together, and that will give us the variance. So doing the standard deviation, the variance takes a little bit more doing, but it's totally doable. I've done all the work here beforehand. You take all the outcomes, subtract them from 950, square those, multiply them by their probability. I added those all together, and I got $70. That's the variance, which means that the standard deviation of this discrete random variable is $8.37. So we have here a game that has a mean play of $9.50 and a standard deviation of $8.37. But to go back to our question, is this a winnable game? Keep in mind that it costs $10 to play this game. On average, players earn $9.50. So what we say here is that this is a game that's advantageous to the house. On average, in every play of this game, the people who created this game get 50 cents, which is the difference from $10 and $9.50. So there is what's called a house advantage in this game. So we're going to look at more casino games within this chapter, and hopefully some fun ones too. Continuous random variables, this will actually not take us nearly as long, although it seems like maybe it'd be more complicated. We have an example here about uh, measuring the heights of young women. We're given a mean and a standard deviation, and we want to find the probability that a chosen woman is between 68 and 70 inches tall. Well, this problem should seem familiar to you because... We did this in chapter two. This is just a normal distribution problem. So we've already done continuous random variables. We just didn't call them that at the time. A continuous random variable X takes on all values in an interval of numbers. So for example, somebody could have a height of 64 inches. Somebody could have a height of 63.9 or 65.012. We can take on all values in an interval of numbers. Therefore, there's an infinite number of outcomes. And the probability distribution of X is described by a density curve. We have to go back to our old friend density curves, which we saw in chapter two. A density curve is simply something like this. It is any um, curve that is above the x-axis and has an area of one beneath it. For example, what I have here is I have a density curve, although it doesn't look like a curve, it just looks like a square or rectangle, that starts at zero and goes to one. We're told it has a height of one, and we want to find the probability that y is between 0.3 and 0.7. Well, what a density curve allows us to do is just find the area, and the area will represent the probability. So here the area we're looking for is 0.4. So this is somewhat of an idealized density curve. But most of the time for these type of problems, we just look at it as a normal curve. And normal curves are density curves, and normal distributions can model continuous random variables. So keep in mind, two words here, discrete, countable number of outcomes. That will be the main focus of this chap chapter but we've already learned about continuous random variables, which are often modeled using curves like the normal curve. So we can do the problem here the same way we did in chapter two. We draw a nice curve, we want the probability, we find our z-scores, or we use normcdf in our calculator, and we can find the probability. There's really nothing new here in this slide. So discrete random variables are really the new ones in this chapter, and they're the ones that we're gonna have fun with.